Let's look at the first example. Use the differential equation approach to find a VOT for T that is greater than zero in the network. In the differential equation approach, the first step is to find the differential equation for T that is greater than zero. This switch will be closed at T is equal to zero. The circuit for T is greater than zero, it will be something like this. So this is a circuit for T that is greater than zero. We need to write the differential equation. So let's call this voltage on this capacitor as a VC. The reference polarity is given like that. So over here, let's just use a nodal analysis to help us find the differential equation. Uh, this node will have a nodal voltage of VC plus VO. So the nodal equation becomes VC plus VO minus this of divided by 6, which is the current leaving this node through this branch. The current leaving this node through this branch is a VC plus VO divided by 3. And the current leaving this node through this branch can be calculated by using C times dV over dt. We added all the current leaving the node that it should be equal to zero, right? So now we have one equation, but we have a two unknowns. But a VO and a VC, they are related. VO can be found by using the current times the 2K resistor, right? So that is the relationship between VO and a VC. VO is equal to C times dV dt times 2. Then we can solve the differential equation 4C times dVc dt plus Vc that is equal to 4. So we find our differential equation. And from this differential equation, we can get uh, two numbers. One is a tall and the other one is uh, the steady state value, which is a K1. The conclusion to a differential equation in the standard form, let me write it down here tall dy dt plus y that is equal to f. The solution to that is uh, yt is equal to k1 plus k2 times e to the power of uh, negative t over tau for t that is greater than zero. So we finish the first step. We find the differential equation. From the differential equation, we'll be able to find uh, the steady state value. k1 is equal to the steady state value Vc at a time infinity. Step three, find the initial condition. The initial condition is Vc at a time t is equal to zero plus. And this will be obtained from the continuity property of Vc. We know this voltage on a capacitor is continuous, which is equal to Vc at a t is equal to zero minus. And at a time t that is equal to zero minus is a different circuit. And before t is equal to zero, this is open. The left hand side is not connected to the circuit. So this is the circuit before t is equal to zero. So there is no source there. So the voltage on this capacitor that is zero. So this tells us k1 plus k2 is equal to zero. We already know that k1 is equal to four. We can find k2 is equal to negative four. We find a VC, but the problem is looking for VO. We can first write a VC. VC as a function of a T that is equal to K1, which is equal to 4, uh, plus K2. K2 is a negative 4 times E to the power of a negative T over tau. What's the relationship between VO and a VC? So here, VO is equal to 2C times DVC over DT, 2 times E to the power of a negative T over tau. So this is the conclusion that we have for t that is greater than zero. The second problem is a brand new problem. We haven't done anything like this yet. So in this problem, we're going to use a step-by-step -step method to find I-O in the circuit. So I-O is over here. In step-by-step -step method, we neglect the process to find a differential equation. We go directly for this constant. So we need to find a k1, and a k2, and a tau. So that is the foundation of a step-by-step -step method. The first step is to find what happens at a t is equal to zero minus. At a t is equal to zero minus, this is the open circuit. 
From this circuit, we can find uh, the voltage on this capacitor at a t is equal to zero minus. Let's call that a VC at a t is equal to zero minus. At a t that is equal to zero minus, this circuit is in steady state. So in steady state, this capacitor works as a uh, open circuit. We are looking for the voltage between these two nodes, basically. We can use the voltage division to help us find a VC at a t is equal to zero minus. So that is equal to 2 plus 4, the resistance of these two resistors divided by the total resistance. So 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 times the total voltage. The total voltage uh, from here to here, that is the 12 volts. That will help us to find a VC at a time t is equal to 0 minus. So we find that at the time t is equal to 0 minus, VC has a value of 8 volts. So the second step is to find out what happens at a time t is equal to 0 plus. At time t is equal to 0 plus, the circuit is different. We need to draw the circuit at t is equal to 0 plus. At t is equal to 0 plus, this switch is closed. And at the same time, from the continuity property, and this capacitor will work as a voltage source with a value of a Vc 0 plus, which is the same as Vc 0 minus. So this will work as a voltage source. And this voltage source have a value of a Vc0 plus. So this is a circuit at a t is equal to 0 plus. So given this, we'll be able to find the initial condition of a I.O. This part is shorted, right? This resistor and this voltage source, they are shorted by this one wire. So that won't do anything. Let's uh, get rid of this part. So the voltage that is giving Vc at a time 0 plus, and this is the current going through that branch. So we can find an IO 0 plus by using Ohm's law. That is equal to Vc 0 plus divided by the total resistance, which is a 2 plus 4. And uh, from the continuity property, we know that Vc at a time 0 plus is equal to Vc at a time 0 minus. And we see 0 minus, we find it from the previous step, which is 8 volts. So 8 volts divided by 6, so that is 4 over 3 milliamp. So next step is to look at uh, what happens at a t that is equal to infinity. When t reaches to infinity, this will go back to steady state condition, and that will be an open circuit. That is how we find an I-O at a t is equal to infinity. So from this circuit, we know that I O at infinity is equal to zero. We find the initial condition, we find a steady state value. So step four, find the com time constant tau. Tau is found through finding uh, the 70 equivalent resistance. If we can find an RTH, then we can find a tau. So RTH is found from here. So this is our RTH. The RTH is equal to two in parallel with the six. RTH is equal to 2 in parallel with 2 plus 4. That is a 1.5 kilo ohm. After we find RTH, we can find a tau. Tau is equal to RTH times C. So over here, R is 1.5 K, and C is equal to 100 mu fa. So this is a 0 0.15 second. We find the majority of the information already. So step 4, we find a tau. Step 5, we'll draw the conclusion. We have a I-O at a 0 plus, we find a I-O at infinity, we also find the time constant tau is equal to 0 0.15. We also know from the conclusion, I-O has to have this form, right? So over here, Y is the I-O. I at a time T that is equal to infinity, which is equal to K1, K1 is equal to this. And uh, K1 plus K2 is equal to I0 plus. K1 is equal to 0. K1 plus K2 is equal to 4 over 3. So we find a K2 is equal to 4 over 3. Now we can write the conclusion. I as a time function of T is equal to K1, which is 0, plus K2. K2 is 4 over 3 times E to the power of a negative T over tau milliamp for T is greater than 0. So this is how we use the step-by-step method to solve this problem. And in this problem, we have an inductor. In step-by-step -step method, 
we want to use this conclusion and find a k1, k2, and tau directly. So the first step, look at what happens at t is equal to 0 minus. Second step, look at t is equal to 0 plus. And step 3, look at t is equal to infinity. And then find rth and tau. Towards the end, we'll draw the conclusion. So that is the plan. So let's look at what happens at t is equal to 0 minus. So this is our circuit at t is equal to 0 minus. This circuit is open. So we'll discard this part. At the same time, at t is equal to 0, this inductor will be a wire. And uh, there is a current going through here. That current is uh, the current going through the inductor. Let's call that current IL at a time t that is equal to 0 minus. So this is uh, what happens at a t that is equal to 0 minus, right? Look at this circuit. We have uh, two branches in parallel. And the overall current is 4 uh, 4m so that we can find IL by using current division. So IL is equal to 6 over 6 plus 6. And we already know that it's half because the two branches have the same resistance, right? That is a 2m. The second step is to look at a circuit. What happens at a t is equal to 0 plus? At t that is equal to 0, this is connected. And at the same time, at a t is equal to 0 plus, this will be a current source because of the continuity of property of uh, the current through an inductor. At t is equal to 0 plus should be the same as uh, the current IL at the time t is equal to 0 minus, right? So over here it serves as a current source. And this current source will have the same current as what we had at a t is equal to 0 minus. So this current source have a value of uh, IL 0 plus. Over here we have three different sources and we are looking for VO. Luckily we know the current through this branch. We can use Ohm's law to find a VO, right? 6IL at a time 0 plus and that will be equal to 6 times the current IL at a 0 minus. That will give us 12 volts. The next step is to look at what happens at a T that is equal to infinity. Instead, it said this inductor will be a wire again. The circuit will look like this. This is what happens in steady state. And from this circuit, we'll find VO at a T that is equal to infinity. If we use the nodal analysis to find that, and I will define this node as my reference node, this nodal voltage over here, that will be VO at a T is equal to infinity. I can write a nodal equation of VO at infinity minus this is 6 volts divided by 6, right? So I'm, I'm going to just uh, neglect this infinity for now uh, to keep it uh, simple. So minus 6 divided by 6. This will give us the current leaving this node from this branch. And the current leaving the node through this branch is VO divided by 6. So plus VO divided by 6. And the current of leaving this node through this branch is a negative 4. And the current leaving from this branch is uh, VO divided by 6, plus VO divided by 6. We find a VO infinity is equal to 10 volts. So we find a, the initial condition, we find a steady state value. The next step is to find a RTH and a time constant tau. So find a RTH and a time constant tau, we need to look at the circuit again without looking at uh, the uh, uh, basically, we are looking for the semi equivalent resistance of a part of the circuit by looking at it from here. Uh, in this circuit, we only have independent sources. We're going to replace this voltage source by a wire, or you can say we will short this voltage source, and uh, this current source will be open so that uh, the current will be zero. And we're going to find RTH from here. We find RTH is equal to, this is 6 in series, the other two in parallel. 6 in plus 6, that is 3, 3 plus 6, that is 9 ohm. Now we can find a tau. Now we have an inductor in the circuit. Tau is uh, equal to L over RTH. L is the inductance of uh, this inductor, which is 4 Henry, 4 over 9. And these are standard units, this is why the unit is a second. Step 5, we will be able to draw the conclusion. VO as a function of a T 
that is equal to k1 plus k2 times e to the power of a negative t over tau for t that is greater than zero. And over here, k1 is a steady state value vo at a time infinity, which is uh, uh, here 10. And uh, k2 is equal to 2 volts and a uh, time constant tau that is over here, 4 over 9. Alright, so that is how we use step-by-step method to solve this problem.